Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala anbiya wal mursalin. Allahumma salli ala sayidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa al khatim lima sabak nasrul haq fi haq wa hadila siratal mustaqim wa ala alihi aqdaril azim. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy, guidance and love. Uh, we are gathered here today uh, for the tribute of our beloved Imam Syekh Hasan Sisi. Uh, we pray that all of you wherever you are uh, in the morning evening afternoon night uh, watching this live uh, you are in good health iman and well-being i mean so tonight we have two blessed guests we have another one about uh, Sheikh Fakhruddin is not in yet but we have two a beautiful soul those uh, who know Sheikh Hasan Sisi personally and being his murid and also continue his leg sacred legacy and tonight uh, both of them going to share with us their experience and what they know about Sheikh Hasan and how Sheikh Hasan impacted their life and their knowledge of understanding Islam and knowing Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have uh, Imam Abdullanda from Michigan uh, who is also one of the uh, muqaddam of Sheikh Hasan and, uh, and also his uh, uh, we call it a uh, uh, physical therapist physical therapy yeah amazing inshallah yeah. <laughs> and also we have professor Zakri Wright uh, who has written a lot of academic works on uh, on the tariqa shamatijani shaybramia and also on the family of uh, Sheikh Hasan Sisi Sheikh Ali Sisi inshallah welcome to both of you i think uh, it's really overwhelming for me to be here with both giant here but alhamdulillah i thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing i think we're going to start first uh, with uh, imam abdul and uh, imam maybe you can start with us uh, telling us and sharing with us how you know she has and uh, perhaps you also like to share the letter of said ali Cisse in regards to she hasan tafadhal imam alhamdulillah wal abdulillah was salatu was salam ala ashraf al mursalin سيد الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق الناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدر ومقدار عظيم ورضي الله عن أصحاب السق ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم يا همة الشيخ أهدي لنا في هذا المحضر وتعتف لنا بالنذر تأتي لنا بذفر ما بعد uh, We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity to be with you wherever you are and in thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we greet you in the greetings of Ahlul Jannah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam We thank uh, Sautul Ilahi for this opportunity and in thanking Sautul Ilahi we thank Sayyidi Khalid and his wife Sayyidi Ainun for sharing this opportunity or giving us this platform and an opportunity to share what we know about Shah Hassan Sisi and all of those who are volunteers and we hope from whoever is listening So this could benefit from the legacy or the life of Sheikh Hassan Sisi radiyallahu anhu. And as it is said, when the righteous are being mentioned, the mercies of Allah would descend upon us. So indeed, there is no doubt that Sheikh Hassan is among those salihin, that remembering him and talking about him 12 years after his passing, is indeed a moment of nuzul rahmat moment of descent of this rahmat i thank professor zakaria for allowing me to speak first i knowing uh, professor zakaria we've shared a couple of panels to, before he is a man of knowledge whom i personally have great respect for his knowledge and his humility humbleness because knowledge without that is useless to its owner al ilm bila adab as the ulama the scholars would say 
knowledge without adab, without humility, is just kajismin bila ruh. It's like a body without a soul. And Allah had blessed him with that. And I think that is mm -hmm. part of part of being along with, with Shah Hassan because that's what he does. Shah Hassan being around him affects you in that level, in that uh, in that level. And he had done so many work that we all are benefiting from. We continue to pray for him that Allah continue to bless him and uh, make all of this work that he is doing on the scale of his good deed. We pray for our shuyukh that are still guiding us. Those that passed away, Shah Ibrahim Sidi Ali and the Muqaddams and specifically our beloved Shah Hassan Sisa, whom we are talking about today. And we send our greetings to our beloved Imam, Imam Shah Ahmed Tijan Sisa in Medina and Shah Muhammad al Mahi Sisa. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bless them with long life and good health and protect them. Shah Hassan, talking about him, I would just share my experience and I will let the scholar I like uh, Professor Zakaria to give us more of, of the experience uh, and, and, and the scholarly writing that he has for Shah Hassan. But I would want to start with the letter that was written by Sidi Ali the day that it was announced to him that Shah Hassan was born. But before we talk about Shah Hassan himself, talk about his father, Sidi Ali, or his grandfather. Sidi Al Hassan, who was born in Joseon, that's his father, whom when he passed away, Shaykh Ibrahim radiallahu anhu wrote on his behalf, Khud Khalifa to Khutbul Kauni, Shaykhi wa Walidi, wa Wasitati Mankat Uti Halahu Dauru, Fajaba Bihau Buhuran, Zakiratin wa Badaha Fayafin, Rafiratin Dunaha Mahmaha Tafakura. Shaykh Ibrahim said about Sidi Ali's father, Shah Hassan, when he passed away. It is Khalifa to Qutbul Kauni. He is the Khalifa of the Qutb of this generation. Shaykhi wa Walidi, he is my father, he is my Shaykh. Wa Wasitati, he is my connection to what I want, to what I'm seeking, which is Allah, whom Allah had given the due right to be even the ziyara and for people to cross oceans upon oceans to grade him ziyara, talking about his importance and his greatness. His father, Sidi Ali Sise, who we know, and Sidi Zakaria will talk more about it. Sidi Ali Sise, as we know him, as the right-hand man of Shaykh Ibrahim, whom Shaykh Ibrahim said in his right, huwa kasmihi Ali, huwa kasmihi Ali. He is just like his name, Al Ali. The elevated. Sidi Ali is known to be the elevated. Shaykh Ibrahim said in his right, Nasrun min Allahi wa fathun yuqaribu fihi huwa tariqun man yuqaribu man, man yarqabu akhraja li zi tariqu aliyun wa huwa la umri kasmihi Ali. This is one of the, 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 the murids have coded to be the statement of Shaykh Ibrahim. When he was right, when he was building or in the beginning of the construction of his zawiya in Al Medina, uh, Al Jadid, which is the Medina by Kolak, when they asked him, he said, the date of which, when you calculate Nasrun min Allahi wa Fatun Qarib, it equates to the date of the installation of this masjid. And when they ask him, he say, Akhrajul huwa tariqu man yaqabu. He is the one that gave me this date because he trusted him to be the one that gave him that. He said in his right as well, that when he was in Guinea, as it was also reported, that Ibrahim said to his, in his right, that a letter was given to him. That this letter came from Min Ahli Sirri, from those of my secret, from those of my private, Wanaibi, the one who replaces me, fi masjidi wa amri, 
in my masjid and in my affairs. That is Sidi Ali, whom he had also said to be his the Khalifa of Sidi Ali, Shaykh Ibrahim radiallahu anhu, his first Khalifa. And this is how he described him as being the man. Sidi Ali radiallahu anhu, when Shaykh Ibrahim was, Shaykh Hassan was born, he wrote a letter. The madmoon of this letter, the content of this, it can be summarized in this, but I wanted just to focus on the dua that he, he had made for Shaykh Hassan. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thanking him for what he had blessed him and more than what he can thank him for. And send his salutation to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first one who pronounced his monotheism and who had thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or shown his greatness, his gratitude to him. And he said, He said, in the beginning, he was announcing that a child was born to me, a boy child was born to me on the night of Wednesday at night time of 10 o'clock at night. The date was 29th of Zilhijjah, at Tasi'ah wal Ashirin min Zilhijjah. That date was the one that Sayyidina Ibrahim was born, Sayyidina Hassan was born in 1945 in Medina Kaulah. And he said, Was Samahu Shaykhana, Anhu. Sheikh Hassan was named by Sheikh Ibrahim. His father didn't give him the name. It's his father, his grandfather, who gave him the name, as Sheikh Ali said in this letter. Was Samahu Shaykhana, Radhi Allahu Anhu, Tazkiratan Biwalidil Hassan. So that he can remind me of my father, his father, Sidi Ali's father was Hassan, and as well Wabi Subti, the Subti, the grandchild of Sidna Muhammad. And he prayed that Allah yurithuhu min barakati, min barakati hima. He prayed that Allah bestow upon him the barakah of the father, his father, and that of Sidi Hassan, a Subti. In, in, in our tradition in Senegal, when you're naming a child, it's just to name a child. You name a child after someone, hoping that the qualities of the named would descend down to the child. So he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these barakats would descend upon him. And he asked Allah that he would give him qurratul ayn. He gave, Allah would give him that the eye would see him and find tranquility, hearts would be tranquil. He would be content with him. Yes, indeed, before passing away, Sidi Ali was content with his son. Yes, with it, with Sheikh Hassan, Sidi Ibrahim was content with him before passing away. Both of his parents and grandparents are content with him, indeed. And he made this dua. He prayed for him 21 qualities that Allah would bless, bestow upon his son. And he said, mubarakan. He prayed that he become Mubarak, blessed one. Everybody knows that Shah Hassan was Mubarak in everything and in every way. Mudiyan, pleasing Allah. His everything was seek of nothing but the pleasure of Allah. Anything and everything is to seek the pleasure of Allah. In that, at one point I had met him. We were in, in, a, in a visit and the circumstances was not the best. And when I approached him, he said, he didn't come to anywhere because of anything except for the sake of Allah. And he said the statement that Shaykh Ibrahim had said that if he was to be called to any place for a visit, one murid, one person called him, he would tra travel to go and respond to that call. So he was, his everything was to have the rid Allah, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hafidhan, very protective, very guarded towards the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's all that was his teaching, to follow the kitab Allah and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Sheikh Ibn Ahmad Tijani would say, to obey Allah, bin haysu yarda la bin haysu tarda. Al amru bil ma'ruf wa nahi anil munkar, min haysu yarda la bin haysu tarda. To please Allah in joining the truth and forbid wrong the way it pleases Allah, not the way that it pleases you. Aliman, being a scholar, Sheikh Ahmad Hassan indeed was a scholar, a known scholar. Professor uh, Zakaria would come to detail for that for us. He was a known scholar, as his education would show. Amilan, not only a alim, but Amilan, also one who acts upon his knowledge. 
knowledge without action has no meanings. And Shah Hassan was alim and amil on what he knows. Arifan, no doubt that he was Arif Billah. And Arifan, Kamilan, a complete Arif Billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waliyan, who doubts that he was a Wali. These are the dua that Allah says father prayed for him. These are the duas. He prayed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him Mubarak, Murdi, Hafiz, Alim, Amil, Arif Billah, Kamilan, and a complete Arif Billah. And Wali to be among the awliyaullah. Mahfuzan, being protected. Being protected from all evils. Mahmudan, someone who is praiseworthy and praised. Mansuran, who is also given a Nasrun min Allah, being assisted, given victory, supported by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maqbulan, accepted. Shahasan has a haiba that everywhere he goes, he was accepted. Maybe Professor Zakaria would give us a more of his qubul in everywhere that he goes. I've heard a story that he even came sometime, one time at the UN. He walks in with his entourage and some of the people, the guests, the honorable guests were asking, who is this king? Who is this king? One time we came to an elevator in, in New York when he came to visit. There was a lot of people that were waiting in this five-star hotel. And you know how it is here in America. When you, the, 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 the door opened, all of those who were so was standing by the door, retreated back to allow him to enter. All of the Caucasian, all of the other people that were standing, no matter what race, were standing and Sheikh Hassan was standing, they all retreated to like, allow him to, to enter. That is Qubul that Allah would give you. That is Nasr that Allah would give you. Mahbuban, he was always loved. To be loved, says father asked, and he was always loved and marzuqan that has the bounties and the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mahbuban, I'll give you an example. One time when he came to America here, he was leaving back to Senegal, to, to New York, and they were driving. He wanted an extra vehicle. And we, were, we left my house here and head out to the airport where we were renting the vehicle. When we came in, he was outside. He never entered the airport. He went stay out. Sheikh Jerry, myself, and a friend of mine went inside to rent a vehicle for Shah Hassan. And when we came to this lady, we told her we wanted just a sedan, a mid-sized vehicle because that was for the other people to ride in. And she asked, who are you renting this vehicle for? He said, "From we're renting it for our Shah. He is traveling and we wanted to rent the vehicle for him. He said, I will upgrade it without a fee. She upgraded the vehicle to a limousine. It was a Lincoln town, town and country. Lincoln Town Car, the big limousine-like vehicle, and for free. And not only that, she, without seeing Shah Hassan, she said, I would like to go to him and ask him to pray for me. While sitting in, in his car, she came and kneeled at the front of the door and asked, stretched his arms and asked her, would you pray for me? And she has never met him. She has never seen him. If we were talking about Makbul and Mahbuban, that's what I would call Makbuban and Mahbuban. Muyassaran, his affairs were always made easy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mun'aman, bounties of Allah flew on him. Mukraman, everybody that sees him honored him. But all of that, he was abidan, he was a slave of Allah, and he accepted to be the slave of Allah. From the time that I've known him, I spent six months in Senegal with him in Kaulak, when I came in, which I will come to how I met him, I would come to visit him. I have never seen him make salat in his house except when he's sick. He would always walk to the masjid to make salat. He would always make, stay at the masjid for his adhkar. He was always would be reading his 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 uh, his juzu aqza for Quran that he reads on a daily basis. His musabba. He would always act upon a believer. Everything that you see him, wherever he is, when Salat comes, he will not make Salat alone. He'll make Salat with Jama'ah. So he was Abidan, Zahidan. He was an athletic person. This world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Khul man harrama allahi Who prohibits people to enjoy these bounties of Allah that he gave us? But yet, this dunya was never in his heart. This dunya was never in his heart. As Shah Ibrahim would pray all the time, may Allah fill our hearts with the love of Allah. 
and fill our pockets with the dunya. That was the man whose heart was filled with the love of Allah, making but zahid fit dunya. Dunya was not his most important thing. And he was wari'a, very pious man. Muqbilan ala Allah, he was always heading towards Allah. His everything was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the dua. This is the dua that his father had made for him. And this is the dua that we should learn to make for our children. Will we have it or will we not? But this is the dua that a father made for his son. And before dying, before passing away his father, all of these came to bear. All of these came to bear. I just wanted to open with that so that we can know who are we talking about and who is his father. His mother was the first daughter of Shaykh Ibrahim. And I think we spoke about it. We had a day for her upon his passing. Hafizat al-Quran, married to his best friend, his right-hand man, his Khalifa. Hafizat al-Quran and Amila, she would always work upon it. They said service for, his, for, husband, for her husband. As it is said as in a hadith, if a woman fasts Ramadan, Allah would open all eight gates of heavens for her. If a woman fasts and obeys Allah and fasts and prays and obeys her husband, Allah would open the gates of the heavens. Sayyida Fatima was known as it is narrated that during her life with Sidi Ali as Qidma to her husband, she would always carry loads of food supplies to come and cook because that time, the Qaddam, those servants were not as many as we have it today. They would be the women that would come and cook and serve. There were almost near, near 50 rooms in the house and she would cook for them just to serve for his family, just so that Allah would bless her with this. And they said even her neck had had such a type of a torticolis because of carrying a load. One of the story that was narrated that at one time he came from the market and he carried a heavy load in, on her head, one of the older children of Sidi Ali saw her and she wanted to help. She came and said, say that this is too heavy. Let me help you carry it for the rest of the distance. He said when she took it off of her head and carried it, she ended down on her knees because it was so heavy. She couldn't carry on. But this woman would do all of this. This woman would do all of that to serve her husband for this. And these are the children that Allah blessed her with. Sheikh Hassan, Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, and Sheikh Nasir Muhammad Al Mahi. These are the sons that Allah blessed him with. That's the fruit of the tree that was planted at the right place. The floor is yours, Sayyidina Zakaria. Sayyidina Zakaria. Thank you, Imam. MashaAllah, what a beautiful way to start this uh, tribute. And also, we have uh, Professor Zakaria. Uh, who is residing in Qatar and teaching university. So, Professor, we'd like to start about how you came to know about uh, Sheikh Hassan. And of course, as Imam mentioned, you can add a lot on <laughs> Sheikh Hassan's uh, work and contribution. Inshallah, Bismillah, we are waiting to hear. Bismillah, wassalat, wassalam, rasulullah. Um, yeah, it's an honor to be uh, talking about such um, an important subject. And um, uh, of course, brings tears to the eyes to, to remember our beloveds in this way. Uh, I really want to thank uh, Imam Abdullah, who is much more knowledgeable than myself, uh, to be part of this uh, panel. I learned a lot from uh, what he said already. Um, how I came to know Sheikh Hassan um, is really um, the, you know, for me, the embodiment of, of Islam. Uh, I became Muslim in 1997. Uh, after traveling to Senegal um, uh, and meeting him for the first time. And I remember thinking, um, you know, I had studied Islam, of course, in, in a university before. Um, and I just remember thinking, um, well, you know, I hadn't converted to Islam because of study. But when I met him, uh, I said, what a, something in me knew that um, this was a different way of, of, of being a human being. Right, that there, that lots of people were living like this, and Sheikh Hassan was was a, was a di was actualizing a different type of human potentiality, and so my I felt I, I knew later that my ruh 
um, sort of was um, testifying to this truth and that I realized that whatever he was doing, whatever path he was on, uh, that was the path to be on. Um, so Sheikh Hassan was, was really the, um, I consider him my, you know, spiritual father um, uh, and, uh, and everything that, and even my later trajectory in, in, in academia or in research was really trying to explain this phenomenon. And, and I, uh, it really comes down to me, to the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he said, وَمَنْ رَآنِي فَقَدْ رَأَ الْحَقِّ Whoever has seen me has seen the truth. Um, and how it was that some people became Muslim just by looking at the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, I also felt that to be part of the Khilafah of the ulama, part of the inheritance of the scholars, the righteous scholars after the Prophet so that they inherited that light by which if you saw them um, and you know God had destined for you a submission that um, you would automatically know. And, um, and you know, this was also a truth that was testified when my mother met Sheikh Hassan. Um, before a few days, she uh, ended in tears and said, I want to become Muslim. The same thing for my sister, um, and to the point where, you know, she met him. And um, at that time, she was, I didn't think she was close to being a religious person. I, I didn't, I didn't know. And, uh, and she came to, to meet Sheikh Hassan and she said, uh, I want to, Sheikh Hassan, I want to convert. <laughs> and he said, convert, convert to what? Do you want to be Buddhist, Christian? <laughs> he said, no, she said, no, I want to be a Muslim. Um, and that was you know, so surprising for me too. Um, but this was the type of effect that he had and it wasn't just upon myself or upon my family, but it was upon uh, many people that I that I recognize. So in many ways, the trajectory of my, my research was trying to explain how it was that a per that knowledge was transmitted through person to person communication in this way, not necessarily through texts, right? That it was through um, uh, the bodily presence, really, of a, yes. a of a perfected human being, um, yes. and that's what was so important. So there are many things, of course. That, you know, Sheikh Hassan. I, I studied hadith with him. I studied uh, other aspects of the Islamic sciences, but um, building up on what Imam Abdullah Yandaw said, the most important thing that we learned from Sheikh Hassan was the inscribement of disposition, right? Of, of, of the, how to be a person of humility and of um, um, constant remembrance of God and everything that you did. Um, and so that was really, um, how I came to know of him, of course, there were, you know, I was a, a, a person who had um, been going to school in, in California and been in other places. And so, so for me, it was, uh, of course, a change in my perspective um, to see, you know, um, a, a, a living uh, holy man. Um, and so, uh, and, and, and so many things, of course, were, uh, extraordinary for me in getting to know him, um, but I, and so among them were, you know, him uh, raising his hands uh, to pray for the rain and it would rain, you know, um, uh, him being able to, you know, one time I, I had some questions I, I was, uh, I wanted to ask for a, a research uh, project. Um, and, uh, you know, those of you that know him, you know, he was very busy, but he would never, uh, tell you to come back later. So you come sit and sit. And uh, I think it was like three in the morning before I was able to see him. By that time, I had, um, was completely exhausted. So he said, he said, okay, Zachariah, um, you know, um, the questions that you wanted to ask me are these. And he listed the questions that I had in my head. And here are the answers. <laughs> so, subhanallah, subhanallah. Yeah. So I came, I started to get to know this, this beautiful man um, in these ways. But um, of, of course, the, the thing that really um, stayed with me was this, this disposition and, and how, um, you know, how it was manifested to me sort of, you know, in the beginning, I, I came to sit in his, um, his salon, his living room, and he had, um, Salaam Alaikum, Sheikh Fakhruddin, welcome. 
Yeah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, we're just talking about how I got to know Sheikh Hassan. Imam Abdullah Yadaw has already said a few words. So, mashallah, um, mashallah. And so, Wa alaikum Sheikh Fakhruddin. Marhaba, marhaba, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sharafatuna wa rahmatullahi Marhaba, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Among the um, procedures of teaching me disposition that I remember was Sheikh Hassan when I first came to sit in his living room. He had all, he had libraries like we have behind ourselves here and he said all, all, all types of books and so he was in the in his bedroom and, and um and i was waiting for it to speak to him so while he's while i'm waiting for him i started to go and look through certain books uh, you know i'd always been an, an academic so i'm looking at these books he has and he comes out and he says zachariah did i give you permission to read that book right <laughs> 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 yeah Yes. And, uh, then later on, later on, as he, uh, after going through uh, more, more training with him and things, um, then he then he told me, okay, now read everything, you know. In, in other words, once your disposition has been formed, um, and you can you can find truth and goodness everywhere. Um, so anyway, that's how I, I came to know of of Sheikh Hassan. Um, and, and a little bit about my, you know, family, my larger family's connection um, with him. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I spent about, um, well, since 1997, I would visit him right regularly. I think I spent a total of about two years in his presence um, off and on. But, um, and so I just want to comment very quickly, have more things to say, of course, about um, who was Sheikh Hassan. Um, uh, but I really like how Imam Abdullah Andawa started with this conversation about um, Hassan, El Hassan, uh, the grandfather of, of Sheikh Hassan, um, and and how um, and so in other words, the earlier connection between the Niyas in the Cisse families, um, yes. and so one of the things to remark upon. So when I last um, visited Sheikh Hassan, uh, a few, uh, a week before he passed, um, he took me in uh, uh, in the in his living room in Dakar, and he reviewed for me. And of course, I didn't know that in a week he would be leaving this world, but he reviewed for me the entire history of his family. <clears throat> and at that time, he had no, with that. myself, uh, Sheikh Hassan and Imam Sheikh Tijani Sisi. They were both sitting there on the couches. I was sitting on the floor. And he reviewed for me the entire history of the family. And he said, and he would ask uh, Sheikh Tijani Sisi, you know, um, to confirm certain details. Well, many of the things he had told me before, but among the things that he said was that when um, uh, Sheikh Abdullah Nias, who was the father of Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, when he came to make the ta'azia after the, for the funeral of um, um, Al Hassan, um, um, at, um, in, in Josong, and that's when Sayyidi Ali, who was the father of Sheikh Hassan, was taken back to live with Sheikh Rahim. And that was the beginning of this amazing relationship. Um, and when he, when he came and he read the will and he realized, this is al Hajj Abdullah Niyas, when he realized that um, uh, Sayyidi Ali had been entrusted with al Hajj Abdullah um, and uh, and he and he said, um, and so this was a sort of testimony, if you will, to um, and as as I've written elsewhere, um, the CC family was really the preeminent scholarly lineage um, yes. in um, in the Salum region where Al Hajj Abdullah and came, and even so, when the father of Al Hajj Abdullah came from um, came from the north to settle in this area, he did so at the invitation of um, Andala Sisi, who was Andala a preeminent yes. Marabu and scholar in that area at that time. And in fact, um, Andala Sisi was the one who gave him the land, not only al Hajj al Nias, but also the ancestors of the Ambaki family who came to fight in the jihad of Maba Jahu at the time. Um, so this was like, you know, mid, uh, mid 19th century. And so this is a very eminent scholarly family, the CC family, you can, you can trace it back, uh, even if you want to, to, 
um, Kayamaga Sisi was one of the founders of the kingdom, kingdom of Ghana, the ancient kingdom of Ghana, not the modern country. Uh, and eventually, at a certain point, they became Muslim, probably in the, in the 11th century, um, with the rise of the kingdom of Mali. Um, this Soninke clerical um, or, or, or royal family, uh, really, who was um, by the uh, 12th century geog Arab geographer El Idrisi, uh, shares a narration that they were widely known as Shurafa, descendants of the prophet during that time. Um, uh, so they, uh, over time, as the kingdom of Mali started to rise, of course, this pre-existent royal lineage of the uh, kingdom of Ghana could have been seen as um, compet a competition to the rising kingdom of Mali. So very smartly, what the uh, I think that the Sisi family did uh, was trans transfer their royal lineage, sorry, into um, into a scholarly lineage. Um, or scholarly reputation. Of course, they had already had some expertise and interest in, in Islamic scholarship. Um, and so the Cisse family, this is attested to by many, uh, Cisse became a sort of synonym for Islamic scholarship. Um, and so there are basically five scholarly lineages throughout West Africa that became dispersed from the kingdom of Mali and the kingdom of Ghana, um, probably from the 12th century or so. Um, and the Cisse Torre is another, the Cisse were the most preeminent. And even if you've ever heard of the Jehanke family, al Hajj Salim Sawari, um, this is another scholar, scholarly lineage. They were originally Cisse people also. So this is a very ancient Cisse, uh, scholarly lineage in West Africa, the, the, the people that brought uh, Islam to the Nigerian region, um, uh, were, were also uh, uh, connected with this Cisse lineage. Um, so for Shehraim, and so Shehraim used to say himself, the Nias got Islam from the Cisse. Um, and so this was a, a testimony to, so this new emerging saintly authority that's coming to, um, be, to, coming to appear in the Senegambia region, namely with um, Shehraim's father, al Hajjab al Nias who is the first really to get Ijaza Mutlaka in the region, um, in the Tarika Tijenia. So he's really uh, manifesting himself as a, as a new type of scholarly and saintly authority. Um, one of the ways in which he um, inscribes himself in the region is to um, get the existing scholarly lineages to buy into this new type of um, this new Sufi community, new clerical community. Um, and so paramount then uh, in this uh, conversation is the Cisse's reception and attestation to the, to the, to the scholarly authority of, of the Nias and their submission uh, to him. So um, this was really a big deal for um, uh, El Hassan Cisse to have left his son to the care of uh, Al Hajj Abdul Nias. It, it was signaling then that we are now completely in your hands, right? Um, and so, what Al Hajj Abdul Nias, what he responded at that time, is to say, now what we want is for our blood to become mixed. And he put his hands together like this. Um, and so, really, Sheikh Hassan Sisi was the. And so, when he told me that story a week before he passed, um, it was the first time he had ever told me that particular detail. And I said, so I said, I looked at Sheikh Hassan and Sheikh Tijani Sisi. So I said, you are the result of that dua of your great grandfather. And they looked at each other and said, yes, you know, um, because they're, you know, this is the, the coming together then of the Sisi and the Nias family, arguably the, um, you know, this ancient scholarly lineage with this new spiritual authority. Um, uh, and so, um, of course, Sadie Ali, Sisi, you know, just to say a few words, because I think Imam Abdullah Indah was, is correct in saying we can't understand Sheikh Hassan without understanding um, his father in particular. Um, um, I'll just say a few things that I wrote down about, you know, interviewing Sheikh Hassan, talking about his father. And one of the things that um, was really remarkable for me about Sheikh Hassan is that yes, when you saw him um, at, 
traveling the world in these very beautiful robes and you would see him received by kings and presidents and and indeed he you know people that met him uh, were in awe of him and thought that he was the king of all of Africa or whatever the case may be um, but when you saw him in Senegal you knew that he was not <laughs> you know definitively that he was um, not doing this for the dunya and any anyway he lived humbly um, uh, even to stay living in Medina Bay, right? It's, you know, for those of you who have been there, it's a beautiful spiritual place, but it can be tough on the nafs, right? It can be tough on, <laughs> on the body. Um, and, and, and so he used to talk about his own father's um, work, khidma, the, the work that he did in service to the religion, in service to the sheikh. And so Sheikh Hassan told me this, he said, the service of the disciple, the khidma of the murid, is his ladder to attain his aspirations. Sayyidi Ali did not attain his position with Sheikh, with Sheikh Ibrahim only because the Sheikh loved him. That's not the only reason Sheikh Ibrahim gave him everything. Sayyidi Ali worked the hardest of anybody, sometimes in the fields until he fainted from exhaustion. He did most of the writing, often without food. Most of the Sheikh's writings were penned by Sayyidi Ali, the Kashf al -Bas, probably 80% of the letters in the Juhar Rasal, Sometimes the Sheikh gave him permission to write on his behalf directly without telling him exactly what to write. Um, and, and then Sayyidi Ali CC himself advised Sheikh Hassan. He said, um, uh, say, this, these are Sayyidi Ali's words. I remember several times going to the farm with Sheikh Ibrahim. Oh no, this is Sheikh Hassan's words. I went to the farm with Sheikh Ibrahim and I asked my father one day, do you think all our efforts on the farm that one day we will get paid for them? Sheikh Hassan was very, obviously very, very young when he asked his question. And his father said, who told you that we are going to the farm to get money? We are going to the farm to worship God. Work is worship. My father used to say, if you are in a place and you do nothing, you are spoiling that place. I don't know where a man can stay and get all that he needs without doing anything. If you know that type of house, let me know. I'll be the first one to close my house and move down there. Um, right, so, and he, and he used to, advise us, you know, as we were Americans studying in, in Senegal, like work very hard, right? You're not here to, you're not in this world to, um, to, to, to be entertained, to have a good time. You're here to work and to learn and sleep is for the grave, he used to say. So, um, and just to say very quickly, um, because Sherebaim, of course, had many uh, khulafa, he had many successors. But just to remind ourselves that Sadi, there's no one like Sadi Adi Sisi. There was no one like um, Sadi, the, the father of Sheikh Hassan in relationship to Sheikh Ibrahim Niaz. Sheikh Ibrahim said in a letter, my successor is Al Hajj Ali Sisi, and there's no Khalifa with him except him, for he is the greatest in this affair without question. Okay. And he said in another letter, 1965. I have left Sayyidi Ali Sisi as deputy on my behalf, the holder of my station and everything in the religion, the world, my family, and my money. And I advise my sons to help him and follow the way. And he said in another letter to Sayyidi Ali Sisi, you are the holder of my station in my absence and in my presence. And we know that Shaykh Ibrahim used to wait to even pray the prayer behind Sayyidi Ali Sisi in the mosque. In another letter he wrote, the son of my spirit, the trustee of my secret, the locus of my gaze, the carrier of the cloak of devotions, the one with whom I am pleased for myself, my family, my spiritual state, my wealth, my brethren, and my father and my followers. May God reward him with abundant good. Sayyid Abul Hassan Ali Sisi Ibn al Hassan. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of God Most High be with you. And just to remind us of the of the um, of the uh, mirath of of the will of Shehraim. Uh, and he said, uh, this is after he said, if I should die and none lives forever, forever, except God, God is my inheritor in my affairs. And then the righteous son, the most pleasing, pleasing servant, the scholar, the knowledgeable one of God and everything, Sayyid Ali Sisi, he is a custodian of my affairs for he is the sheikh of my children and my companions and my inheritor, a Khalifa after God. And then of course he named uh, Sheikh Hassan to be the Imam. Uh, after Sayyidi Ali, and then after that, whomever Allah wills. Um, uh, and 
Sheikh Tijani Sisi, who was the one whom ever Allah wills to become the uh, Imam after Sheikh Hassan. He said when Sheikh Hassan heard the will read in the mosque um, after the passing of Sheikh Ibrahim, he said, now I, will, I know I will not live long <laughs> because of the, the burden of this. Yeah. Um, so I know we could keep going, but we have, um, uh, I want to, well, uh, Sheikh Fakhruddin has uh, disappeared for a minute, but you should come back. But um, back to you, Khaled, do you want me to continue? If there is anything else you'd like to share, uh, Sheikh, why not? Maybe we, we learn. You're fine with it, Imam? Yeah. yeah alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Sheikh Hassan, um, you know, the, well, uh, Imam Abdullah Indaw gave me a tall order of different, of a whole list of things that he thought that I, 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 I can't remember um, everything, but of course, um, his, his scholarly reputation, I, I would just give two examples, um, because the external scholarly reputation is, is well known. I think it is interesting that he, he straddled both um, kind of modern types of schooling uh, and the traditional uh, Majalis schooling, um, and that he you know, went to Mauritania also to study Quran away from Medina, where he would have been known as, you know, um, and probably got preferential treatment. Um, so, but also that he went to Ayn Shams University, um, but at the same time, uh, you know, later on was awarded diplomas from Azhar University. Um, Ayn Shams University is a, is a more sort of modern type of institution in Egypt. Um, he also uh, uh, studied in London, of course, and he was pursuing a PhD at Northwestern University uh, in Chicago when he um, had to come back to Senegal to take up the imamate. Um, but a couple of, um, you know, narrations that point to the, um, you know, I, I would say the, the, the true source of his, his knowledge, of course, is that um, one time Sheikh Ibrahim, Sheikh Hassan told me one time Sheikh Ibrahim came to, um, uh, came to Cairo while he was studying there and then left him, you know, a big kunash, like a big notebook full of um, esoteric knowledge um, and then left. And so Sheikh Hassan told me, he said, I was asking myself, how would I get to know, um, uh, you know, all the, how to under, because these, these texts, those of you that have read them, of course, are often written in code, right? You need, you need somebody to help you understand what's going on. And sometimes they're actually, the, there's faulty information on purpose so that you don't come upon the text and use it without permission. Um, so uh, he said that, um, he learned how to use this text by, you know, um, somebody who would come in his dreams and teach him how to, how to, um, how, how to use the text. Um, in another case, when he went to seek, uh, he met, uh, he and his brother, Sheikh Tijani Sisi, um, went to um, uh, meet the great Hadith scholar, Yasin Fadani, um, who was originally from Indonesia in the Hijaz. Um, and of course, this was a great musnad, and he had um, one of the um, greatest kind of collections of ijazat in the Hadith sciences in the world. Um, and this was in 1990s or so. So out of Adab, he came to seek um, the ijazat in Hadith from Sheikh Yassin Fadani. Um, and Sheikh Fadani met him and said, well, I uh, won't give um, this to you without particular permission from the Prophet. So um, Sheikh Hassan said, okay, Bismillah. So he said, come back tomorrow. So when he came back the next day, Sheikh Yassin Fadani said, the Prophet has come to me, Sayyid Salam, and said, um, you are worthy of that. And also for your brother, Sheikh Tijani Sisi. Um, so this is sort of, uh, I think, a reference to the uh, overall point that whoever fears Allah, Allah will teach them. And this was the greatest um, uh, inheritance of, of Sheikh Hassan, that he had this incredible um, uh, wara, as, as uh, Imam Abdullah Endaw pointed out, this in incredible um, 
uh, humility and um, complete reliance on Allah to, to, to teach them. He was a true muwahid. Um, one more story I'll just relate before going back to Sidi Khalid. <clears throat> I was in um, uh, one time in 2006, uh, Sheikh Hassan invited me to visit him in Nigeria. So I went to, to see him. And at that time, of course, um, you know, you ha usually have a person who is the chief khudam, that like the chief kind of servant that will uh, stay with the Sheikh all night. If he needs something, he will help him and usually sleep outside the door. So there was a man in Nigeria doing that at the time. And I said, you know what, I'm going to ask to be that person. So I told them, <laughs> the man there, I said, let me be the one to stay with Sheikh Hassan that night. <clears throat> and uh, so I would, had, my himma was very strong. Maybe it's around midnight. I start making all my tahajjud and my various prayers I'm, <laughs> while I'm waiting for <laughs> Sheikh to need anything. And then after two hours, I'm, I spent all my energy, very tired. <laughs> so <laughs> I lay down and I go to sleep without realizing that I did. And the next thing I know, Sheikh Hassan is, is literally standing over me, looking down at me. He says, Zachariah, <laughs> it's time for Fajr. He said, where were you? I didn't see you at all last night. <laughs> so I was very embarrassed. But he said, Zachariah, last night, I went to the presence of Allah. And Allah said to me, uh, ask whatever you want. He said, so I said, Allahumma ar arani haqqan, haqqan wa zukni itibahu, wa arani batan batan wa zukni itibahu. Right? This is the famous dua of the Prophet. Allah, 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 Allah. Right? Allah. Allah, show me the truth so that I can follow it and show me the falsehood so that I can avoid it. And he said, and Allah repeated it after me. <laughs> so that to me is a, um, the, only, the only testimony that I would ever need of Sheikh Hassan's maqam, of his spiritual Allah station. Allah. Allah. Also that he, he didn't have any will except that what Allah wills, and he doesn't want anything except what Allah wants. Um, and that's what I remember, and of course try to internalize um, with all of our own selves. Allah. Okay. Allah beautifully shared Shay. Uh, interesting also we learn a lot from your sharing your knowledge and how much you know Shay Hassan uh, may we learn from all this to all of you I mean and now we have uh, Shay Fakhuddin uh, just now he went off for a while there is some technicality I believe so Amila, how are you Shay Fakhuddin we hope you are in good health uh, how are you and uh, we hope Alhamdulillah. you are yeah, so Alhamdulillah, uh, I'm fine. How are you? Uh, good, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so uh, we want to ask you a question. How did you meet uh, Sheikh Hassan and was it when he went to South Africa and how was the experience like throughout the years after the your first meeting of Sheikh Hassan? Alhamdulillah, uh, alayhi wa Um. Alhamdulillah, you know, the my first meeting with Sheikh Hassan, uh, it happened in, in 2003, in the year 2003. And uh, for me, really, it was, I've been uh, in, in Sufism, in Tasawwuf, uh, my whole life. Because uh, I come from a Sufi family, my, my parents, my father, my grandfather, great grandfather, all, all these people are people of Sufism. All of them are, you know, uh, in Tasawwuf. So Sufism is part of me. But, and I personally, from the young age, I was very much interested in that path. I met a lot of sheikhs, uh, I recited a lot of zikrs, I attended a lot of majalis, I read a lot of books to Sufism. But, uh, I was always, uh, you know, uh, wanting to meet the true Sufi. You know, it's one thing to hear the stories of the great Sufis of the past, which I would hear from my father, uncles, and, you know, they talk about all the great awliya that used to be back in the day, you know. Uh, and I would read the books of the Sufis, and uh, again, they talk about the awliya of the past. 
and I was in love with all these Oliya of the past, but a part of me wanted to see uh, a living Wali, a living, a true Sufi in our own time. You know, yeah, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani was great, and uh, Sheikh Ma'inuddin Chisti was great, and, and Al Junaid, and all these great Oliya and Rumi, and uh, but they have also said that in every age there will be a Wali. The books of Sufism clearly state that in every time, in every age, there will be Sufis awliya. It's not something that only exists in the past. So therefore, my uh, wish was to meet a true Sufi, a true wali in our time. Uh, and that would be the fulfillment of my journey in Sufism, to finally, after reading all the books and the stories, to finally meet a living personification of that. And for that, uh, to fulfill that wish of mine, I used to go and meet a lot of sheikhs. Uh, I met a lot of uh, Sufis and sheikhs. Uh, I used to live in Madinah Munawwara, and that's where everybody comes. You know, the haram is always full of, you meet all these great people there. So I always, you know, used to meet them. And I came to South Africa. Uh, also, a lot of great shuyukh came. And uh, yes, you know, amongst them were pious people and uh, saintly people as well. But uh, it is really, uh, you know, but I, uh, none of them could really fulfill that desire of mine completely. Maybe they fulfilled it partly. Okay, you know, the man is a Sufi or Sheikh, mashallah. But they couldn't, you know, they, they didn't fully fulfill my wish. It's only when I met uh, Sheikh Hassan Sisi, radiallahu an, our Sheikh, that I felt that today I have met the real Sufi. That today I have met the complete Wali. I won't say I didn't meet Walis before him or the, the sheikhs that I met before him are not Walis and inshallah they are. But really when I met him, I felt that this is the complete Wali. This is the man I've been reading about. This is who all the books talk about. Uh, and it really, I, I cannot quantify it, you know, it was just an overwhelming feeling. You know, it was just uh, that this is really the, the true wali. If there's a wali on earth, it's this man. If there's a Sufi on earth, a complete, a perfect one, I mean, uh, this is it. You know, this is this is the one that represents the Prophet وسلم, really, truly. Uh, this is, you know, the Qutb, uh, the master of all the awliya and the saints and the Sufis. Uh, but I don't want to go into the Qutub and all that, but really, this is the true Sufi. This is the true saint, the Wali. So I could feel that wilaya, I could feel that sainthood, I could feel that, that, that power, that spiritual power, the spiritual energy, the baraka, uh, the Muhammadan energy, you know, I could feel, the, you know, the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam, you know, how the Sahaba would feel around the Prophet, uh, I could feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when you sat with him, you're close to Allah. You you, you felt, you know, uh, this is the closest you can get to Allah, you know. Uh, obviously, this is before tarbiyah and stuff and all that. But still, nevertheless, the feeling of, uh, I mean, you felt more close to Allah sitting in his company than you would if you were in by the Kaaba, you know, or in the masjid. Or the, you know, I know it's a controversial statement. <laughs> but... Uh, no, you feel close to Allah in the masjid. You feel close to Allah by the Kaaba. You feel close to Allah when you read the Quran. All of these things are bringing you closer and closer. Of course, again, I'm not speaking in Marifa terms here. You know, obviously, in the, in that realm, there's no close and far. But for the person who, who's not yet achieved that Marifa, you you, you come closer and closer. And the closest I, I felt was in the company of of this wali. You know, so uh, of course. This is, this is, I mean, the Sufis have mentioned that already, you know, in their books that uh, the Wali is the one who looking at whom reminds you of Allah and his company, you are in his company, you are in the company of Allah. So that was my experience with him. Uh, it wasn't one of, I, uh, I heard a lecture that, by him. And, oh, I was, like, really impressed by the lecture. There were other scholars. I, I was impressed by them, by a lecture I heard of them. and said, mashallah, oh, wow, what a brilliant lecture, you know. And, and that's great, you know, knowledge. And Sheikh Hassan's, the, the impression he made my, on me was not, you know, uh, some fantastic lecture he gave or uh, some fantastic book that he wrote. There are other scholars who I was impressed by their books, and I still am. Uh, 
you know, it, it was just the presence, you know, the spirituality, which for me, obviously, is the essence of everything. That's the essence of all, you know. All the lectures and the books are supposed to lead you to that anyways, you know. They are to lead you to Allah's presence too. So really, uh, he took me, he took me spiritually. Uh, I mean, he took me before I took him, you know, because uh, when I met him the first time and I was in his service and his company, I wasn't a murid of him. I didn't take tariqah. In fact, I took tariqah a few years after that. And that and a lot of people don't know that. Uh, so when I was with him, I, I didn't take tariqah at that time in my first meeting. Uh, but I, I became more attracted to him and more attached to him than even some of the murids. In other words, I was with him in all his gatherings, and even some of the murids were not in all the gatherings. They were, you know, they'll come for a gathering, they'll miss a gathering, they'll come again. They'll... But I wasn't a murid yet, but I was like, you know, I want to be 24-7 with this man. Uh, I would force a murid to take me, and the murid is lazy. He said, ah, inshallah, we'll go later, ya khi. You know, I said, no, man, I don't want to go now. And I'm surprised. This is your sheikh, but you are lazy to go. And I'm not a murid of this man, but I can't wait to be with him. And so, uh, you know, he, he, they would go and take me. And, uh, so that was the first meeting. And uh, I, at that meeting, I, 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 I was convinced that this is, you know, um, the wali of the age, the man of the age. This is the complete wali, the complete Sufi. Uh, and then, you know, I, I would call him sometimes on the phone and talk to him with some of his murids and... Uh, eventually, I took the tariqah. That's a whole different journey. Uh, how I ended up finally taking the tariqah. I had to overcome some hurdles, some uh, situations. In uh, and then after after I took tariqah, of course, uh, I had beautiful experiences with him all the time. Um, uh, I, I went to him to Senegal a few uh, twice. Uh, I was with him in Morocco. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I loved him. And uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, he loved me too. You know, I just said for, 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 just for Habaraka, you know. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we, we were in Morocco and he, he asked me to speak on behalf of the South African delegation. That was the last trip with him. And uh, 2007. And uh, I, I wasn't on the list of the speakers that day. Uh, but he, uh, I, I recall him like really uh, speaking to the minister there of the Moroccan and insisting, you know, they, they talked like for a while and he insisted uh, to the Moroccan guy that you have to let uh, him speak, even if it's five minutes. The South African delegation needs to have a word. Uh, there's about 20 of them. So the Moroccans like, no, it's not part of the program and we can't change the program now. And Imam Hassan said, no, this is what I want. This is my request. So it was done. And they gave me the five minutes. And Alhamdulillah, I, I spoke that day. Uh, and I mentioned him as well. I mentioned the Faida in that talk. It was a five minute talk. And uh, I was very happy that, you know, when after the talk, I asked him about it. He said, uh, He said, You know, I used to speak to him in Arabic, by the way. I always spoke to him in Arabic. Uh, so I said, How was the talk, Ya Sidi? So he said, You said everything. So you said everything. Uh, because I mentioned the Faida and Sheikh Hassan. And, but uh, what impressed me of Sheikh Hassan as well, uh, after the initial impression, was his uh, adherence to the Sharia. You know, he always, uh, his praying, at, uh, whenever there was prayer, he would pray wherever he was. It doesn't matter where is the hotel room, is the airport, it's a park. Uh, if it's time for prayer, he'll be like, you know, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and they pray. And this really impressed me of him, the, 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 the firmness on the Sharia, because I've seen Sufis, I've seen people on Turuk who, who, who don't really do that, you know, who, who are quite lazy when it's some, some of these things. Uh, his uh, compassion uh, for everyone of all of Allah's creation, whether, you know, uh, white or black or poor or rich or uh, people of all nations, religions, and colors used to come to him. I mean, literally, people of all races and religions would come to him in Medina Bay. And even when he would be in other countries like South Africa and so on, he came twice. Uh, he would be just so welcoming and so kind. And, and he didn't have any any hesitation with anyone, which, you know, we, we you might have these hesitations. You know, we might feel... Oh, you know, this guy, you know, he's this or he's that or she's this or she's that and stay away from them. And, 
You know, you, you have these natural hesitations. He didn't have any of that. It, it was like he was just welcoming to everybody, loving to everybody, yet always towering above all of them. You know, whoever would come to him, Imam Hassan would be towering them. If a president of a country met Imam Hassan, Imam Hassan would be the one that's overwhelming that president. You know, you could see it in, even in a photo, you could see it. Uh, and in real life, uh, his humility was amazing. Uh, he, as great as he was, you know, you had kings and presidents coming to him. Uh, very humble, uh, as Shidi Zakaria was saying. You know, in his home, he would sit just with his normal uh, taub, you know, um, he would take his hat off and just sit down and with all the murids, the youngest ones, the oldest ones, the ladies, the men, uh, you know, he, he would just be humble with everybody. And that humility, that akhlaq that he displayed would, would truly remind you of the, the akhlaq of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was no arrogance. There was no, you know, kiss my hand type of attitude, you know, uh, very simple and straightforward. Uh, his words were few. Uh, again, this is a Muhammadan quality, Jawami'ul Kalim. Uh, you can go to him with a long problem and you talk for 10, 20 minutes explaining your long problem. His solution is only one or two words. His solution is only one minute, 30 seconds, you know. You know, and then and, and you think like, yeah, you know, uh, I told you this long problem in my life and I'm expecting a long answer, complicated answer. You just tell me two, three things. and But then you realize, you know, afterwards that those two, three things that he told you in that two minutes, that is the answer. The answer was always there. It was so simple, you know. Uh, I'm just complicating my life. He gave me the answer, you know. Uh, people are complicating my life. I'm complicating my life. The answer is so simple. Just follow it, you know. So, I mean, I know. I mean, I can give some serious examples of things like that. I mean, uh, I was in a situation that went on for one entire year. Uh, because uh, and that was my mistake. I didn't take his advice on it the first time. Uh, I, 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 I don't mean take, but I didn't seek his advice on that problem the first time the problem started and it went on for a whole year. And, you know, it was something worldly. Uh, and I, I, a part of me felt I shouldn't maybe disturb him about this. But end of the day, you know, you need to consult your sheikh. And uh, eventually, in the end, I did. And the answer he gave was so simple that I felt like if I had to get this answer earlier on, I wouldn't even be in this problem. Uh, uh, and alhamdulillah, I followed the answer he gave me and people were all against it, who were around me. They were telling me, no, 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 you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. You should, whatever, whatever. I said, guys, my sheikh has spoken and I don't care what any of you think. Uh, my sheikh has told me what to do. And I'm just going to follow him. And I followed his advice. And alhamdulillah, the problem was solved. Uh, everything, you know, just went well after that. So he had the Jawami al Kalim, you know, like the Prophet ﷺ would have few words, but they were full of wisdom. His dua was mustajab. Uh, if he really prayed for something, you know, it happened. Uh, I saw that many times in my life. Uh, in my short, I didn't have, I, I wasn't so long with him like other people, but in the five or six years I, I had him, you know, uh, his dua was mustajab. Um, Sheikh Hassan also, I mean, uh, true servant of Islam. Uh, a man of Sharia, a man of Tariqa, a man of Haqiqa. So many people accepted Islam on his hands. So many people found Allah on his hands. Uh, really, you know, uh, as one of the poets said that Siftul Khalili, Yakhiratan Nasi, Warista Makana Fi Kosi Wafasi, that, uh, oh, grandson of the Khalil. Khalil uh, refers to Sheikh Ibrahim, عنه, because Sayyidina Ibrahim is Khalilullah. So uh, if your name is Ibrahim, they also call you Al-Khalil. So he said, Sipta Al-Khalili, O grandson of the Khalil, Ibrahim. Ya khirat nasi O best of people. Warifta ma kana fi kosi wa fasi. Indeed, you are the inheritor of that which was in kosi and that which was in fas. So what was in fas is the tariqa. It came from fas, from Sidi Ahmed Tijani radiallahu anh. And what's in kosi is the fayda. The fayda started in, in kosi. That's where it flourished. So he said, you are the inheritor of Kosi and Fasi. Uh, so really, he was the imam of his age, uh, the sheikh of his age, the wali of his age. And uh, I'm going to conclude. Uh, we can always continue afterwards. But uh, I, I remember I, I, he told me one day I spoke to him on the phone. Uh, it, I had taken ijazah from one of the, the shuyukh of the tariqa, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, hadith, the respected Sheikh Muhammad Ali Aqubi. 
Uh, he came to Cape Town. I went and read some books of Hadith to him. I got ijazah from him. And I was very excited, and I told Sheikh Hassan on the phone about it. So uh, Sheikh Hassan said, uh, what's interesting was that Sheikh Al Yaqubi's main ijazah again came from Sheikh Al Fadani of Makkah, Yasin Al Fadani. And that's from Khalid's neighborhood, that man. Uh, but, but he obviously he moved to Makkah, I mean, a long time ago. But he was like, I think, from Thailand or Indonesia or somewhere. So uh, Sheikh Al Yaqubi's ijazah comes from Sheikh Al Fadani. So when I told Sheikh Hassan that I got ijazah from Sheikh Ali Yaqubi, uh, I was just excited. I told him that that was my first ijazah also in hadith. So uh, he said, MashaAllah, you deserve it, you deserve it. And then he mentioned, and I, I also got ijazah in hadith when, uh, many, many years ago. He said, I got it from Sheikh Yasin Al-Fadani. So uh, I didn't mention that to him, that Sheikh Yaqubi's main sanat is from Sheikh Fatil al-Fadani. So Sheikh Hassan said uh, to me after mentioning, mashallah, you deserve that ijazah, he said, uh, I also got the ijazah in hadith from Sheikh Yasin al-Fadani. So uh, in other words, the Sheikh you talk each other from, you know, he took, I got from the same Sheikh as well. And he said, we went with him for Umrah in Makkah. And uh, he gave us ijazah that day. We all made Umrah with him. And he said, we didn't make Umrah from Ja'arana, uh, from Masjid Sayyid Aisha. We went all the way to Hudaybiyah with Sheikh Yasin Al-Fadani. We said it was me and Sheikh Tijani Sisi. And then from there, we made Umrah with Sheikh Yasin Al-Fadani. And he gave us the ijazah. And he said he got the ijazah also from the Sheikh, uh, the Muhaddis of the Prophet's Mosque. So, there was a great Sheikh in Medina, his name was Sheikh Ahmed Abdul Jawad. He was Khalwati in Tariqa, but he was a great scholar of Hadith. He said, uh, me and Sheikh Tijani went to him also in the haram and asked him for ijazah. So he said, I will consult with the Prophet وسلم, and then answer you. It was between Maghrib and Isha. So he come back to me after Isha. So he said, Sheikh Hassan said, I went to him after Isha. And he said, Bismillah, he gave the ijazah to me and Sheikh Tijani in hadith. Uh, and then he mentioned to me that, uh, Alhamdulillah, Qadiman, Raitu Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqazatan. And London, he said, and this is what I heard personally. So it's not a story it's circulating and stuff. It's what Sheikh Hassan told me. Um, he said that when I was in London many, many years ago, you know, as a young man, when he was studying in his teenage years in the 70s, he said, when I was in London, I saw the Prophet وسلم, in broad daylight. I saw Rasulullah you know, in front of me. And he said to me, Oh, Hassan, uh, uh, you know, talamizuka uh, talamizi wahbabuka ahbabi wa majalisuhum majalisi. Your students are my students, and your beloveds are my beloveds, and their gatherings are my gatherings. This is what Rasulullah told to Sheikh Hassan Sisi radiallahu anhu, and he told it to me directly. He said, Rasulullah said this to me Your students are my students, and their gatherings are my gatherings. And that uh, inheritance from Sidi Ahmed Tijani radiallahu anhu, because uh, the Prophet ﷺ said the same to Al Khuddul Maktoum, Sheikh Sidi Ahmed Tijani radiallahu anhu. So saying it to Sheikh Hassan is kind of confirming the maqam. He is he is the holder of that maqam today. And I once uh, and I conclude with this final thing. Uh, uh, once I asked also Sheikh Hassan about a particular ijaza uh, in a particular prayer in the tariqah that Sheikh Ibrahim used to give. So I asked Sheikh Hassan if he received that ijazah from Sheikh Ibrahim as well. In that particular prayer, I don't want to mention it, what it was and stuff. But I said, Sheikh, did you also get ijazah in that? So he said, لَقَدْ قَالَ لِلشَّيْخُ فِي أُزُنِي He said, قَالَ The Sheikh Ibrahim said to me in my ears, أَمَّا أَنْتَ يَا حَسَنْ فَقَدْ أَعْطَيْتُكَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ He said, as for you, O Hassan, I have given you everything. Sheikh Hassan said, Sheikh Ibrahim held my ears. He said in my ears, as for you, O Hassan, I have given you everything. So uh, may Allah bless uh, the Ruh of Imam Hassan radiallahu an, and keep us steadfast on the path he has shown us. That's the most important thing. It's not about talking about what he did and what he was. To carry on the work of Imam Hassan so that he's pleased with us when we meet him again. He is happy and uh, he feels that we've lived up to his mission. آمين يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق في الحق والهادي إلى أصرادك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم
Thank you, Sheikh Fakhri. Mashallah. Before we end in everything, I just like to ask uh, Imam Dlandao because you had a very interesting uh, travel in your life uh, to Sheikh Hassan, right? And uh, you were studying in Kuwait, and then there was a Gulf War. And uh, how were you? How was it that you came to America? And also at the same time that uh, Haji Ashaki ever told me that Sheikh Hassan also stand for humanitarian work. Uh, he built a hospital and everything. So this is more than just uh, it would be. Uh, okay, uh, Professor, you have to go. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So Imam, uh, would you like to share with us your, your experience and also Sheikh Hassan uh, in terms of humanitarian work and effort? Alhamdulillah, walabdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursalin, sayyid al-anbiya wa imam al-mursalin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala. Thank you, uh, Sheikh Fakhruddin, for what you shared with, uh, with us. And uh, what you did mention about the jazad and hadith is what uh, Professor uh, Zakaria did mention earlier. My experience with Sheikh Hassan is, is an amazing experience personally. Uh, I was, I studied in Kuwait myself. And uh, as I studied in Kuwait, my father was a, a murid and was very close to Sidi Ali. And uh, would every Juma he would, I remember as a young man, he would be at 10 o'clock at the masjid so that he will visit Sidi Ali, visit Sheikh Ibrahim, and then go to the masjid and wait for Salat al Juma. Uh, in 1996, 97, I believe, I came from Kuwait. That's before I graduated because I graduated in 1989 from a physical therapy undergrad in Kuwait. And my father introduced me to Sheikh Hassan the first time. And uh, they were they knew each other very well, and he knew the relationship my father had with with Sidi Ali, and he told him, "I would like him, my son, to be with you, the way that I was with your father." And he granted him that. And forgive me if I get emotional when I when I talk about that because it is where he found me, who I was. Alhamdulillah, I was raised in a Muslim family in Senegal, in Kaulak. I was lucky to meet, have seen Sheikh Ibrahim because he passed in 1975. I was at that time studying at the Mahad, the institute uh, in, in Kaulak. And in 1977, I had the chance to get a scholarship and went to Kuwait to further my studies. I did Mahadidini and so on and so forth, but I ended up in college. I chose to go to physical therapy and become a physical therapist with my undergrads there. And in 1990, the Gulf War happened. I returned back in Senegal. And as I would, every year would, when I come to summer, I go visit Shah Hassan. But this time when I got repatriated, I came home and he found out about my return. He asked that I come see him. That was day one, I come to see him. And it was in the morning after he opened, around 11ish. We sat there, Salat al Dhuhr, we went together. And for him to choose me all the time, because he probably wanted to, to help me make a better person out of me, he would always have me by his side to go to Juma, to go to the masjid. How many times that I he would ride with him in his car? And by that time, I was just a graduate from the Gulf, Middle East, as an Arabic student, as we were known at that time to be rebellious. None of us believed anything about Sufism. We had this Wahhabist mentality in our heads, questioning everything. So I come to visit this, this man, Alhamdulillah, with an open mind. So we would go together, I would come home and stay with him, we'd eat lunch, he will have me wait, I will sit waiting with everybody, evening time until midnight, dinner time, Shah Hassan's dinner time usually is around one o'clock in the morning. And I lived in Kaulak, in the city, which was about three to four miles away. So when, I, when time comes for me to go home, I will leave his house to go home at late night. 
And at that time, I, I was a poor man. I had just got repatriated from Kuwait. I had no job. All I was doing was a volunteer work. So he would ask me, I will see you tomorrow. I said, okay, Sheikh, I'll be here tomorrow. But one day I, I didn't have it. I didn't have a bus fare to make it back to Medina. And I said to myself, when he tells me, I'll see you tomorrow, I will tell him I don't have the bus fare so that he will excuse me. But he didn't tell me that. He said, I will give you a bus fare. I said, no. And I said to myself, no, I will may manage to get a bus fare. He's not gonna give me bus fare just to make a better person of me. So Alhamdulillah, I was able to find, to, to, to get bus fare. And I kept coming to see him. Then I seen how he beha behaves. And I've heard of the Sufis, the Sheikhs, they take money from people, people come and giving them money, they're only exploiting other peoples and whatnot. That's the mindset we had. But I see this man in the morning when he opens, people come in with prescriptions and he will pay for it. People would come in because they don't have any provisions at home, he will give them the money. People come in because they wanna travel, he will give them. He will constantly be giving from morning to night. I have seen him give until his pockets were empty. I can go on because I spent about six months that I almost every day will come and stay at home at this place until I leave. I'd ask Shah Hassan after seeing his behavior with people, after seeing his piety, his humbleness, his humility, I con was convinced that this is what I wanna be. I wanna be like this man. So when they say the tarbiyah is not just what words that they were set for you to do, but to embody the person, to live with the person. Shah Hassan has that effect on you. When, you. when you are with him, it rubs off, as they would say. So I was fortunate enough to have that feeling that I wanted to be a Tijani and I wanted to be his murid. I'd ask him three times to give me tariqah and he would ignore me every time. He gave me tariqah in the car, traveling to go to Kaolin. In the car, he turned around and said to me, Abdullah, are you, are you still ready? Are you ready to take the tariqah? And I couldn't believe it. And he gave me tariqah. And I lived with that, constantly coming in and going to visit him until one day in 1991, when the delegation came from America to visit him. When they came in, in the conferences that he used to have in Gambia, and people would, would travel in the 24th of December, December, and he would have vehicles travel from, from Kaulag to Gambia to attend the conference. I went and attend the conference and I came back. And he asked me that I stay with the American delegation because I spoke English. And we start talking about one of his, his dreams, wanted to, to build a hospital because I was in the medical field. He asked that I sit with his brothers and we start talking about it. Amongst them was Sister Khadija, uh, his wife, who was a medical doctor, Dr. Karima Joseph, who is a medical doctor in Detroit. Her husband, Imam Salim, late Imam Salim, may Allah be pleased with him and grant him Jannah. And brother Farooq Azizuddin and his wife, Sister Sabira. We were talking and discussing about uh, this hospital and this clinic. And that's how I ended up coming to America. He asked that I come and follow up the project that we was talking about. Unfortunately, it didn't materialize in my hands, but his forbearing and his foreseeing, I told me, if it works, if not, take care of yourself and go learn. And that was the reason why I carried on with my OMPT, the orthopedic manual. Before his passing, I had had my master's with it. And after his passing, I got my DPT, the Doctorate of Physical Therapy out of Oakland University here. And I say that because it was all of his himma and his wanting knowledge. And he wanted always to serve mankind. He always wanted to help and assist. And his humbleness and understanding of mankind. I said the story about the woman that was, that saw him and has this, his haiba allowed her or forced her to come in and submit in front of him. But here is another story. We were in Detroit here and we, at the hotel, they gave us the terrace, the top upstairs and the, the roof 
were making wazifa there on Zikrul Jum'ah. And here, a young man brought in a sister who wanted to come and visit, visit the sheikh because, you know, the sheikh's here. She wanted to come and visit the sheikh. But she came in with a short, a mini skirt. And all of the sisters, of course, were offended that she would stand nearby Sheikh Hassan with this mini skirt. And they asked her to sit down. And she turns around to them and say, how do you want her to sit with this? She cannot sit with what she's wearing. Go get her a chair. She never rejected her because she was not dressed properly. They wanted to put a hijab on her. She refused and said, leave me alone. This is not me. But she has still accepted her with the way that she was. They put a chair next to her. And she hasn't, she asked questions. She hasn't answered her questions. She asked questions. She hasn't answered her question. The next day, she returned and took shahada. The next day she returned and took shahada. So that's how he was representing the Prophet Muhammad If you were hard heartedness, rough at the edges, people would run away from you. No one would run away from shahasa. He was seeing and love him. See him and love him. That was how he was. And all he wanted was to to serve and assist. There is a mission that he had asked me to, to, to get a water tank, which will fetch water from one area to another area of, of, of Salem because they don't have running water or fresh water. So he wanted a truck that would bring the water to them. And he had given me money for that before he passed away. These are the things that he always wanted, how he can benefit mankind, how he can serve and benefit mankind. And the hospital that he that is being built right now by his brother Shah Muhammad al Mahi and the community and the Murids is an extension of, of his dreams and his desires to make sure that the communities are taken care of and are served. When we wanted to make Wazifa here, we were just two of us or three of us, not many. He told us, don't worry about it, just that. We ended up at a point where we there's so many people coming in for Zikrul Juman and Wazifa. Right now we have a Zawiya Tijaniya, a large size Zawiya Tijaniya in Detroit, all by his himma, all by his desire and willing to teach and, and, and advise. If I become somebody who is called an Imam Abdullahi or whatnot, it's because of him, because of what he had, the effect and the impact he had in my life. There are those who would see me today and know me when I was younger, totally would know that I'm a different person. Halid would say always the age of punk rock, but I will not say my age, what it was, you know, but Alhamdulillah for, for Sheikh Hassan in my life, Alhamdulillah for having changed my life to make me who I am today. There are certain stories that I cannot just narrate, but for the sake of time, I will say, if you were looking for a Sheikh, that was the one. If you were looking for a wali, that was the one. If you were looking for an alim, amil, as his father prayed for him, a scholar who acted upon his knowledge, that was Sheikh Hassan. If you're looking for a wali of his time, that was Sheikh Hassan. If you wanted, wanted to look in for somebody who was mukram, zahid, mukram honored, zahid, ascetic, and you were looking for someone who is al a pious, that was Sheikh Hassan. These were the qualities, like Sheikh Fakhruddin said, how many times we travel in a vehicle going on to New York in a rest area, he will pull over the vehicles and make salat. He will not wait till you get there. At the airports, if he stops and you're waiting, his plane has to wait, he will make salat. And as far as karamats, karamats are not to be spoken about. But Alhamdulillah, whomever had known him, had seen on him or with him, some of the thing that is just by the mercy of Allah, by the blessings of Allah. We are honored to have had Shah Hassan touch our lives. And I am particularly honored to have been one that had given him several times a massage. And that's something that I, that I, I, I pride my hands for having touched his, his blessed body. And I'm grateful to Allah that he had given me that opportunity to have touched his blessed body. As one of the Sahabis did when he was standing on the, the battle of Badr and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam poked him on his stomach, straightening the line. And he asked him that he wanted to take his khist 
to, to pay back for what he had poked my body. You poked me. I want you to touch, touch you. I want you to bear your stomach so I can poke you at the way you poked me. He, Salah was raised his, his garment and he threw himself on the body of the prophet and cried and say, I don't know if I'm going to survive this battle, but I want the last thing that my body touches your body. So I say, Alhamdulillah, that he had allowed me that my humble hands had touched his body. With that, I say, Alhamdulillah. Khalid, the floor is back to you. صلى الله على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق الناس للحق بالحق والهادي إلى صلاتك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدري والمقدار العظيم صلاة تفتح لنا بها أبواب رداء وتيسير وتغلق لنا أبواب الشر والنظرة والشقاوة والتعسير وتكون لنا بها وليا ونصيرا أنت ولينا في النعم المولى والنعم النصير صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما سيدي خالد آمين So if you have something to, to add on, Bismillah, while we we'll wait for Khalid. Oh, okay. Will you say Amin to your dua? Sorry, sorry. Uh, I would like to say that uh, what, what I'm saying is that uh, we're going to end this session. We are nearly to two hours. One and a half already, mashallah. Uh, blessed to hear from the three of you your experience with Shia Hassan. But before we end, we'd like to hear from any last word from both of you, Shia Fakhruddin and uh, Imam about uh, you know the life of Sheikh Hassan and how we can continue to benefit from from uh, his life and his teaching and his guidance. Or is there any books by him? Yeah, Tafad. Uh, I think Sheikh Fagrudin first, and then Imam, and then we call it. Yeah. Well, uh, I know Imam Abdurrahman mentioned that he he was honored to see uh, Imam Abdullahi mentioned that he was honored to see uh, Sheikh Al Islam. Sheikh Ibrahim radiallahu an. And you know, that is a big na'ma and blessing. Sheikh Ibrahim said, Oman yuhibbuni, oman yarani, fi jannatil khuldi bila buhtani. Whoever sees me uh, or even loves me is from the people of Jannah without doubt. So I, I recall I was, I was sitting one day in Sheikh Hassan's house. Uh, uh, in the same line as Sheikh Hassan, there was between me and him two or three people. And uh, next to me was a Mauritanian Sheikh. And I started talking to this Mauritanian Arab Sheikh. And so I asked, asked him, oh, did you see Sheikh Ibrahim? And he asked, you know, you look like an old man. He said, naam, naam, of course. Uh, you know, we met Sheikh Ibrahim many times. So then I said to him, honey and luck, honey and luck, you know, glad tidings to you, glad tidings to you. Uh, uh, but we missed it. Fatan Azali. You know, uh, I said, we missed that honor of seeing uh, Maulana Sahib al Um So he, he said, la, la, la. He said, no. Unzuri la other rajul. He said, he pointed to Sheikh Hassan and he said to me, look at that man. Man ra'ahu faqad ra'ash Sheikh Ibrahim. Tamaman, tamaman. He said, whoever sees him has seen Sheikh Ibrahim radiallahu an. Completely, completely. He said, look at that man there. Hassan, if you've seen him, you have seen Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim radiallahu an. Completely, completely. So he was a complete inheritor of Maulana Sheikh Ibrahim radiallahu an. Uh, in, in one statement, he said to Sheikh Hassan when he was building the masjid, he said, Hassan, I'm building all this for you. Uh, but Sheikh Hassan fulfilled the amana till the end of his life. Uh, his prayer leading the five times Allah in the masjid, the wazifa, uh, till the last moment. So as last words, all I can say is that uh, uh, we need to hold on to the teachings of Sheikh Hassan radiallahu an. Uh, the world is still in need of the example and the teachings that Sheikh Hassan left us with. And Sheikh Hassan is not over. Uh, his message continues. His spirit continues. Uh, people like Imam Sheikh Tijani Sise, uh, Maulana Sheikh Mahi Sise, they are reflections and continuations of the work of Sheikh Hassan radiallahu and the work of Sheikh Ibrahim. So the faida will continue. And we have to uh, continue with it. 
and uh, never do anything that will disappoint our Sheikh radiallahu an, and try our best to uh, spread the message of Sheikh Hassan radiallahu an. We all love Sheikh Ibrahim. We haven't met him. He, he passed on before I was even born, but we all love Mawlana Sheikh Ibrahim radiallahu an. So the work has to continue, inshallah, and the world still has to learn more and more about Sheikh Hassan Sisi radiallahu an. May Allah uh, raise his maqam with the Nabiyyim, Suddiqin, Shuhada, Al Salihin. May Amen. Allah grant us to be with him once again. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Amen. How about you, Imam? Uh, any last word from you that you'd like to share? So Hassan, oh, I was muted. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, sorry. So, okay. I guess I heard. Yes. Alhamdulillah. I was saying, we thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for this opportunity to talk about this man, as it is said, and the Salihin that anazal rahmat. When we're speaking about this righteous one, the the mercies of Allah would be descending upon us. So we're grateful to Allah that we have this opportunity. And when you love somebody you follow his footsteps. As Rasulullah was described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ لَيْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخَرِ He was our role model. And from him, Shaykh Ibrahim uh, embodied him. Shaykh Hassan embodied him. So we've learned from them and they left us with these great scholars, Imam, Imam Shaykh and, Imam, and, and uh, Shaykh Muhammad al-Mahi to follow their footsteps. If we love them, this is what we want to aspire to be like them. We want to aspire to be like them. We do like what they have done. And one of their missions is to, to continue to help with education. She Hassan taught. She Hassan built an institute. He built AAII, the African American Islamic Institute in, in Senegal, welcoming everybody and anybody from all walks of life, people who can pay and people who cannot pay. She Mahi is carrying on with that same project. People who can, the, not long ago, a busload of children was dropped at his door, doorstep for children that he has never even met their parents probably. And they were there from out of Senegal, from Ghana, I believe, for them to learn. And he will house them, feed them and teach them. The same with Imam Shah. This is the le legacy of Shah Ibrahim, is wanting to teach without a hesitation for those who can pay and those who cannot pay. So I, if our love is true, we assist them in making that happen. She Hassan built a, a clinic, that clinic which is Shifaul Astan in Medina to help treat people. And he had made a dream and he said, if everybody was to pay 1,000 safer in the community, we would have a hospital that would serve, serve us and serve the community. So those of us were able to help in keeping up the legacy. Because if you love somebody, when he passes away, carrying on their legacy is the show of your love is they were love of Allah, you love Allah. They love the Prophet, you love the Prophet. Shah Ahmad Tijani, Shah Ibrahim, and the Faida, mm -hmm. and the mankind. He had no exception in mankind. There is a hospital being built, and the great help that Sautul Ilahi is doing assist in, in, in seeing this hospital into flourish. So these are the things that we can do in helping uh, make the mission happen, uh, to, to, to carry on the mission of, of, of the Shaykh with the presence of our beloved Shio. Uh, please excuse me for, for a second. No. This is the mission that we can do. We need to carry on with, with this mission. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Sabi Hani, I got a, I had a call coming from Shah Mahi. So Khalid, if you have a few words to say before I can yeah, it's okay. I think we can uh, end it now. And I think now with uh, Sheikh uh, Rokudin. Sheikh, will you uh, make a closing dua? Yeah, no problem. I want to mention one very quick story, Khalid, uh, for everybody oh, listening. Sure. Yep. Uh, because when Sheikh Hassan passed away, we, we are commemorating his passing on, away also. Uh, the night he passed away, obviously nobody expected it. He wasn't sick or in hospital, make dua for him, nothing like that. It was a complete surprise. The night he passed away, uh, I usually, before I go to sleep, uh, I go and pick a book from my library. I take out any book. And I just read a little bit, you know, I like to do that before I sleep. Uh, and uh, that night I went to pick a book. Obviously, I have no idea of Sheikh Hassan, what's happening, anything like that. 
just a normal night. I picked out a book. It turned out to be a book on Siratul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's something I've read a lot about anyway. So I'm like, oh, okay, Siratul Nabi, you know, I mean, okay, but Bismillah, Barakah, we let's read it again. Then I, I'm not going to read the whole book. So I just uh, would just turn the pages randomly and see wherever the book opens, then I would mm -hmm. just read that chapter. It could be Battle of Badr, it could be Uhud, it could be the marriage, it could be anything, the Mawlid, Mi'raj. I open the chapter and it is Babu Wafatu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The chapter on the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh. And I was like, do I really have to read this now? You know, I don't, this is, you know, this is a sad chapter. You know, it's not the, it, it's emotional to read that chapter. But I said, Allah wants me to read this. I said, I'm going to open whatever chapter. I'm going to read the whole chapter. If it's Badr, I'm going to read the whole chapter. If it's Mi'raj, I'm going to. So I read that entire chapter. Wafatu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Close the book. I put it away. I don't, I still don't understand why I had to read that chapter. And just. Three, four hours later, that was like 12 in the night, and then like around four in the morning, just three, four hours later, I get a call from the daughter of our Sheikh, Sayyid Aisha Sise. She lives in Cape Town. And I'm thinking, why in the world is she calling me <laughs> at four in the morning? She never does that, you know. And she says, uh, Imam Fakhruddin, uh, she, you can see her voice is so heavy. She said, I'm just calling you to tell you my father, Imam Sheikh Hassan Sisi, passed away. And I was like, oh, La ilaha illallah. Ilaha illallah. And it was just so, and you know, it was something else. And I realized that reading that chapter of a fat of Rasulullah really saved the day for me that day. It prepared me for that. Because when I read how Rasulullah had to leave the world and all his murids, all the Sahaba had to cry, and, and, and I, it just prepared me for that. So that is something I just wanted to share. Uh, Imam is back, Imam can make dua. <laughs> I think yeah yeah, yeah. Khalid yes I, I I I just wanted to say this because uh, earlier when I read this this uh, statement uh, attributed to Sheikh Ibrahim yeah. I wanted to I, I had called uh, called Shahas Shamahi and I asked him to verify the statement for me and Subhanallah this is what I'm talking about our Shiro he's calling me back to confirm what I was asking him this was one of the qualities of Shahasat you never call him any time that he would not return your call. He would answer your call or he will recall you later. And here he is calling me back. This is the statement that Shaykh Ibrahim said about Sidi Ali's father, Hassan, when he passed away. This statement Shaykh Hassan Mahi is telling me was said to Sidi Ali and his father. He said, Khalifa tu qutbul kawni shaykhi wa walidi wa wasitati man qad utiha lahu dawru fajaba buhuran zaqara this is the statement that he is talking about that my Khalifa, the Khalifa to Qutbul Kauni, the Khalifa of the Qutb of this generation, Shaykhi, my Sheikh, Walidi, my father, Wasitati, my connection to where I want to be. He is so deserving too, worthwhile traveling, crossing oceans with these amwaj that are so heavy. So, this is what he was just confirming for us that this was a statement that was said on the behalf of Sidi Ali, of Sidi Hassan, the father of Sidi Ali. But I would finish uh, Khalid with just what Fakhruddin said, Imam Fakhruddin, that the way we found out about the passing of Sheikh Hassan, so similar to what Sheikh Fakhruddin was saying, we were having a meeting at one of our brothers, Abdul Rahman, and there was a scholar from Senegal that would, we, we, we invited in, in our area. Every day we would visit, as you guys would do when I come to Singapore or when you have a visitor, to visit different families. We were at Abdurrahman's house and we were talking about the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And at that oh, moment, man. he was ending up the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi He's talking about when Jibreel came to him and asked him, give him the khiyar, the khiyar. And he responded, Bal ila rafiq al So I shall return to my best companion. At that moment, my phone rang. I, my phone rang from Kafani in Detroit. And I respond, Kafani said to me, I got a call from Medina Bay that Sheikh Hassan is sick, but they, and they're even taking him out to the hospital, make dua for him. And this man that was sitting with us, uh, Sazba has passed away, may Allah have mercy on him, said to us, let us all sit down on the ground 
if the soul is still within, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, 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 for recovery. While we're sitting down, praying for him, Husaynu, another brother that was standing, called in Sheikh Mahi to be confirmed that Sheikh Hassan has passed away. Look at that coincidence. The moment that we was talking about the ruh was leaving the Prophet Sallallahu is the moment that the ruh was leaving Shah Hassan. And when I came and told Shah Mahi during the janazah, I came to Senegal, Shah Mahi told me at that moment when they were taking him out of his room, he had already passed away. So what a coincidence. What a coincidence. He lived to be 63. He died on the same day. And this is if embodiment of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that was a true embodiment of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah, so, beautiful. Allah, so beautiful and so blessing. So I think we had a blessed night, day, evening around the world, watching three of you talking about Shia Hassan. There's so much to talk about and share. And we had uh, the barakah of it, uh, listening to three of you. We thank Allah and the Prophet, Shia Ahmad Tijani, Shia Ibrahim Nias for all these blessings. Uh, I think before we end, uh, we have, uh, I think, maybe both of you to make dua and we close it, inshallah. Yeah. Bismillah. Shafa Khulim. Bismillah. Shafa Khulim. Inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatih lima aghliq wal khatima lima sabaqna asri al-haqq bil-haqq wal hadhi ila suratika al-mustaqim wa ala alihi haqqa qadrihi wa miqdarihi al-azim. Allahumma arfa' darajatahum ma'an nabiyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin wa hasuna wa laika rafiqa. اللهم لا تحرمنا أجره ولا تفتنا بعده واغفر لنا وله والحقنا بهم يا رب العالمين حققنا بنسبهم وحسبهم وجعلنا خير خلف خير سلف بجاه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم آمين 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 يا رب العالمين اللهم يا رب اللهم أمين يا رب بذاتي وصفاتي كلنا في سائر الحالات ثبت قلوبنا على الإيمان والتهدنا لعمل الإحسان انظر إلينا وانصر الذين أدي حقوقنا وأدي دينا وهب لنا ذرية مباركة تكون لله بلا مشاركة واجزي كل من إلينا أحسن واجزي عنا جزاء الأحسن بالمصطفى شفيع يوم المعشر خير الورى من قد حبيب في قوله عليه صلى ربنا وسلم الوفاد بخيرنا وأمن اللهم بلغ ثواب ما قرأنا وبركة ما تلغى هدية إلى روح شيخنا حسن سيسي وروح والده وروح والده وشيدي شيخ عبد الرحيم جسر الله ولا جميع من سبق في رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام سلام سلام على المرسلين وعلى شيخ محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين. Thank you once again uh, Imam Abdullah and our and uh, Sheikh Fakhruddin for being part of our program tonight uh, evening in your daytime morning for Imam and even uh, yes. Professor Zakir Rahat to left early. Inshallah all of us learn from the three of you and may we follow the footsteps of Sheikh Hassan and emulate his adab akhlaq. And you know we we film on the day of judgment with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Shaykh Ahmad Tijani, and all his alifa. Uh, with this, we like to say, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, goodbye. Not goodbye, but we see you all of you again soon, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Masalam. Assalamualaikum, Shaykh Ahmad.